What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Crossroads Rebuild. Thank you for being back on the channel today and welcome to another episode on the Lincoln. Today I've got the Lincoln back from Jack. As you can see it has a painted hood and fender and so on. I've got the red bumper painted now behind me as well. So today is reassembly day. I'm gonna go ahead and get this car put back together so we can get it on the road and it can start making me some money in that side hustle it was purchased for in the first place. I'd really love to show you the wonderful work that Jack did on uh, the repaint, uh, but as you can see, it's been sitting in my driveway for a couple of days and it is covered in pollen and junk that falls out of the trees there. And so it's really not uh, good uh, conditions to show it to you. So I'm gonna go ahead and get to work on it. And then when I'm all done, I'll clean it up and we'll show you the whole car. And you can see what it looks like all put back together. And of course, the good work that Jack always does. You know he does great work. And so you know this turned out great as well. Anyway, with all that being said, I'm gonna put up the time lapse, get you guys going so you can watch, and I'll check in here with you shortly. quick update I of course removed course part crash bar all that stuff from there got it out of the way in preparation for putting the new stuff in replaced the battery I did have the donor battery but it wasn't in the greatest of shape it was also the wrong size so went ahead and got a new battery for it and got that in because I'll never have an easier opportunity than when there's nothing on the front so battery's been replaced still using our same hood prop from the beginning of this project we'll get the replacement in here shortly anyway cleaned up our donor um, radiator that's the word for it cleaned up our donor radiator had a little bit of stuff caked on it and i've actually got a new condenser um there is a condenser on the donor car that as far as i know is actually good but i chose to put a new one on there so that i won't have to deal with it in the future uh, as far as having any damage plus uh, if i take that one off of course i either have to uh, have the system evacuated or i have to do something that's you know not exactly legal so i went ahead and went the route of just getting a new one and it is awesome when you have oem parts how they just snap together, no problem. I'm debating now whether or not I wanna put the uh, fan, uh, where is the fan, I've got it, there it is sitting right here. Whether I wanna go ahead and put the fan on now or if I wanna get it part way in the car and then slot the fan on. Really, the part I'm about to do now is one of the hardest parts because it'll be partially attached to the core support, uh, but it also still has to be hooked up to hoses and lines and stuff that are still on the car. And then of course, we've also got our electric motor uh, radiator that fits on the front of this, but its hoses actually come around the core support. Uh, so that one actually has to go on afterwards so that the hoses uh, go in the right place. So I'm gonna go ahead and start figuring out this puzzle and the best way to get all of this put back together and uh, put you guys back on uh, time lapse. Wish me luck and enjoy. guys and there we go I am back and I was working on some uh, little nitty-gritty stuff that wouldn't be interesting for you guys to watch on uh, on the video so I took care of routing some wiring and 
you know, hooking up a few little things like putting in the cowling and the, and the uh, windshield wipers and a few other odds and ends. Uh, had a damage, I don't know if you remember from one of the first episodes there, of course, I had a broken sensor, but the actual wiring uh, harness itself was damaged. So I went ahead and uh, spliced in a piece of wiring harness from one of the donor cars. And uh, so everything is kind of buttoned up as far as mechanically goes. I've even put coolant in it and run it through to make sure it's not leaking. What you see down there is residual from before. Uh, it's not actually leaking. So as you can see, I have the headlights out. We're gonna go ahead and pop those things in, make sure they're working. And then we're gonna go ahead and build up the bumper. So you guys go ahead and just sit back and relax while I get to work, putting those headlights in, testing them, and then putting that bumper together so we can get the face back on our car. Let's go. have it the front bumper installed the mkz has its face back actually we're missing one important thing i'll be right back all right there we go goes this way there we go now she's got her full face back now this bumper is not 100% installed. Still need to attach it to uh, the side or the, the wheel well trims and some things that go up underneath here. Uh, but it is bolted all the way across and snapped in on the sides and she's looking much, much better. Now you may remember me mentioning at one point that the trim from uh, the old bumper was actually in better shape than the lower trim that came off of uh, the white donor bumper, this bumper. Um, and it was, and it is, uh, I've installed it. It's not in great shape, uh, but I'm not gonna buy a new one because again, this is a budget build and it's kind of an unimportant piece anyway. Uh, so I've put that one on there. It looks good enough. It'll clean up and I think it's looking pretty nice. So that being said, it looks like it's gonna try to rain on me here in a moment. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick up and call it quits until the rain passes and then I'll get back out here and keep working. See you then. Welcome back. As you just saw, I'm back to work and I just got the trunk lid swapped out from the red donor car onto my car. That's a job that probably would have been easier with two people, but certainly manageable with just me. Uh, and it's really not that hard to get a trunk lid off. Honestly, you got to take uh, the cover that you see here, the inner liner or whatever. Uh, you got to take that thing off of there, uh, which is just a bunch of push buttons, a little pull handle. Uh, and then you got to pop all the wires off, uh, which again are just clipped in place. And uh, once that's off, you just unattach it from the hinges and there you go, simple as that. Just takes a few minutes to really swap it out. I haven't gone through the process of trying to get this lined up yet and uh, there's a reason for that. So let me show you what I gotta do next before we can go any further. Alrighty guys, so I don't know if you remember from one of the first videos I showed you uh, that the original trunk lid, which is over there uh, from this car, has a bit of a buckle right here. And I'm guessing it got hit down low because remember the, the uh, bumper was cracked over here as well. And uh, it's not significant. I don't actually know if you can see it uh, in the video or not. I think you can kind of see it. There you go. 
um, there's just a little bit of a crease, a little bit of a push in right here. It's not significant, and uh, I am hoping that I can take care of this myself because uh, I need to do that, first of all, in order to make sure uh, that it latches, to make sure that it seals, and then also to bring this back in line uh, so that we have a good body line on that side. So I'm gonna go ahead and find a board and a heavy hammer or a mallet or something, and I'm gonna see if I can just kind of push that thing, kind of beat it back into submission, so to speak, and get this thing to push out. It doesn't really need to go very far, um, but it does need to come out a little bit toward us. This side is perfectly fine, so I just need to bring this one out just a little bit, and we should be in good shape. So I'm gonna put you guys back on the time lapse, and I'm gonna get to work trying to see if I can get this pushed back out. Alrighty, folks well change of scenery I left you off just well a few seconds ago for you uh, it's actually been a few months ago for me uh, where I was working on the rear end here of the MKZ trying to get the rear bumper put back in and dealing with a little bit of an alignment issue with the body Whoop, got a dog next door he's uh, decided to join the video anyway uh, so where I left you off was needing to take it over to Jack and let him tweak it. Well, he did that. Okay, I hear you, it's nice. Anyway, I did that, took the car to Jack, he tweaked it up, got that taillight fitting properly, got the bumper fitted properly, and um, well, that was a long time ago. As you know, I've been off videos for a while just getting back, and so I went ahead and finished getting the car put together uh, on my own. You guys have seen me and probably lots of other people finish putting a bumper on, it's not that exciting. So anyway, the bumpers are back on the car, it's all put back together, um, and so it's been a few months. So let me go ahead and show you what we've got, and then I wanna talk to you about the last few things that I'm gonna do with the MKZ now. So as you can see, everything is done back here and fitting up nicely. I've got the bumper and trunk lid from uh, the red donor car, and that fits up well, and uh, everything is lining up nicely. Tail light got replaced, all that, and that is looking good, other than it does have a little scuff on there that uh, I'm not too concerned about. Remember, this car is being put together on the cheap. So uh, all of that's back together and looking good. And then uh, up front here, these are all parts from the white donor car and that is all put back together as well now i know here in the camera those don't look like they match uh, but they do i promise that fender and the hood and the bumper are all from here the white donor car see there's the dog over there talking to us and uh, anyway so all those parts have been uh, repainted you saw me finish them up in the last video. They've been painted by Jack and I've got everything put back together and the car is looking great. And honestly, I've had this car on the road now for several months. 
All right, so what's left for the Lincoln? Well, you may remember in the first video, I talked to you about the interior was disgusting and smelly and, uh, you know, not in terrible shape, but not in perfect shape. Um, and to be honest with you, most of you recommended I use the interior from the red parts car. In theory, I would agree with you, but there's a couple problems. First of all, problem number one, that's a colossal amount of time. Uh, I don't know if any of you have ever done a full interior swap. Maybe some of you have, but uh, that is just so much time invested. Oh, look, we've got a visitor managed to get out of the gate. I wanna take care of that real quick. Okay, all is well, dog is back where he belongs in the fence. Uh, anyway, where was I? Oh, interior swap. So doing a uh, full interior swap is a lot of time, a lot of work, and I'll be honest with you, I'm very, very busy. I don't have time for that. Uh, I agree with you, that's a much nicer interior. So in an ideal world, that would be the way to go. Uh, in addition to that, another problem with that is what I mentioned in that first video, where it's I would need an airbag and a seat belt uh, in order to do that swap. And like I said, several times through this process, trying to do it on the cheap, those are just parts I don't wanna pay for right now. Um, thirdly, just on a practical note, to get a headliner out of these cars, I'm pretty sure they're put in before there's any windows. Look, the dog got out again. Great day, I don't know what to do about that. Anyway, uh, worry about that later. Uh, to, to do a headliner in one of these, um, I'm pretty sure in the factory they put them in before there's any windows. Now, I had the windshield replaced in this car, but I'll be honest, I wasn't even thinking about a headliner at the time I had that done. That would have been really the only time I could have done it. To get it out now, I would either have to fold it up and ruin it or cut it and ruin it. So there's really no way to swap the headliner and the headliner's the wrong color for these cars anyway. I'm not interested in using the interior from the white car, at least not in its entirety because, well, the reasons I mentioned, it's got paint on things and the seats have been rewired and yada yada, it's no cool. No cool, it's no good, it's not cool, whatever. Anyway, but I've got a compromise. What I'm gonna do is take some of the parts from the interior of the white parts car I put them in my interior because there are a few things in mine that are fairly worn out that are really in pretty good condition not perfect but really good condition on the parts car that's the steering wheel i'll show you a little video here uh b-roll of my steering wheel and its grungy condition as well as the steering wheel from the parts car so the steering wheel the shift knob uh, is pretty wore out in mine again more than double the mile so it's kind of understandable and then um the uh what do you call them? The sun visors. Mine are kind of grungy looking, so I'm going to take the sun visors out. All of those should be relatively easy parts to swap out, uh, so I'm going to do that. That's why I've got the hood up. I've gone ahead and unplugged uh, the battery on my car uh, so that the battery can be drained and it won't be dangerous to pull the airbag out of it. Uh, so I'm working on that. I'm going to go ahead and put you guys on a tripod, pull the parts from the white parts car, and then do the same on mine, swap them in, uh, swap everything over, and that'll make mine look a lot nicer. Once I've done that, give you an update and talk to you about uh, the last few things related to this car. There you go steering wheel comes out pretty easily it's always a little finicky to get the uh, airbag out but not too bad on a ford just two little clips on either side and then uh unplug a couple things and a 16 millimeter nut and the steering wheel's off so i've got the steering wheel off i've got the shifter uh off and i even took the little uh console thing from the sun uh from the ceiling off Ran into some troubles with these uh, sun visors. They actually unbolt really, really easily, uh, but they're wired, they're electric, because they've got lights and buttons and stuff on them. And it runs somewhere way up into the sunroof and I can't figure out where to unplug them. And I'm not so much worried about this one because I could tear it apart uh, and figure it out, but I really don't want to damage the sun or the uh, headliner in my car. So I think I'm just gonna forego doing those and uh, Maybe grab one or two other things here. 
Uh, on uh, my car, I do have a little bit of a trouble with uh, the, um, the wiper uh, position uh, on the stock. So I may see if this one will come out relatively easily and swap that out as well. If it's hard or complicated or something, I won't worry about it. But if it's relatively easy, I'll just pop it out and call it a day. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and give that a try. And then it's uh, time to move over to uh, putting some parts in the car. Not so bad. Really the hardest part was figuring out what screws were holding on this bottom cover. I had one Torx and two Phillips, go figure. Anyway, I think we pretty well have everything off that we're taking off up here. So time to move over, take some parts off of my car and uh, start putting these on. Let's do it. Well, replaced my shifter and my steering wheel. Just realized I forgot to change the stock and I went to the trouble of taking it off the other car. So we're gonna take the steering wheel back off and replace that now. So, that's out. Let's go ahead and swap the other one in. You know, I gotta say, considering it's a hybrid and, you know, it's a luxury car and all that, these cars are actually pretty easy to work on. A few finicky things here and there, but overall, Pretty easy to work on these things. Anyway, let's go ahead and put it back together now. Get that steering wheel back on. All right, steering wheel, take two. The airbag's nicer from the donor versus the one that came out of this car. So we're gonna put this one back in. And that's that. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this out and replace it and we'll move on. All right, well, of all the things that I just replaced, that was actually the trickiest, go figure, but that's been replaced. Really wish I could have replaced these, but uh, like I said, in the other car, the wiring just goes up into who knows where, into oblivion there, so it is what it is. It's a used car, right? Um, steering wheel and airbag, though, replaced. See the old steering wheel, like I showed you before, totally grungy. This one looks so much nicer and it feels so much nicer as well. And the shift knob as well. Now this shift knob's not mint. Sun's making it kind of hard to see, there you go. This shift knob's not mint, but when you compare it to this, yeah, it's a whole lot better. So uh, we've got the old junky stuff pulled off and replaced and uh, looking a whole lot better, feeling a whole lot better. There's one more thing that I need to replace. I'll show that to you now. All right, so we're back here at the back seat, and as you can see, we've got a problem. Now, I don't know if you remember back to the first video where I was showing the interior. Yeah, that wasn't there. Uh, the other day, I went and picked up a microwave, and it fit in the back of the car just fine, but uh, I guess I got a little carried away, and the corner hit the seat and punctured it and tore it. So, uh, you know, I've got a parts car. So I've actually already removed the rear seat cushion from the parts car. Need to clean it up a little bit. Uh, this car was hitting the 
pretty bad back here and so it leaks around that door so it got a little dirty right here so i'm gonna go ahead and clean it up and then take this one out it's not so difficult at first you've got a clip on each side here I'll show it to you a little easier that clip under the seat on both sides and the front just literally just lifts right up um, there's a clip on the back or a hook if you will on the back that's a little harder to get out but with a little finagling it can be done so i'm gonna go ahead and clean this one up pull this one out and swap them so let me go ahead and keep going Well, I'm no Stoffer's Garage or Detail Geeks, but it looks a lot better. It's nice and clean. So the last thing I'm gonna do, I'll do it off camera because you guys don't care. I'm gonna go ahead and vacuum this out, get it kind of tidied up a little bit, and then slap this guy into there. And I think at that point, other than a little cleanup, we're done replacing stuff on this car. So let me go ahead and do that. I'll catch up with you momentarily. All right, guys, I think we can say that the Lincoln MKZ Hybrid is officially done. With those few things that we just wrapped up with replacing some of those interior parts like the back seat, the steering wheel, the shifter, and all of that, I think the car is so much nicer than it was. I also changed the cabin air filter. Here's a picture of the one uh, <laughs> that I pulled out of here. I'm pretty sure it has never in its life been replaced. And I say that not only because of how dirty it is, uh, but also because of taking everything apart. It looked like it had never been apart before. And if you follow me on Instagram, you'll have already seen that photo, but that was disgusting. But this car has been detailed, I've replaced all of the damaged stuff from the accident. I've replaced much of the stuff that was worn out just from so many uh, miles put on the car. And it is genuinely a nice place to be. When I got the car, it smelled terrible. Uh, but having detailed it and cleaned it up, it smells so much better. And it's not even an offensive place to be, honestly, it's not. With so many miles and so many years of smoking in it, you wouldn't think you'd be able to. But trust me, if you put a little effort into it, the car can be cleaned up and it can still be all right. That being said, I told you at the beginning of this series, uh, two episodes ago, that the reason I bought this car was to drive it for one of my jobs. In fact, if you look in some of these panning shots that I've done just a few minutes ago, you can see my license plate on this car and you probably have a good idea of why I bought this car, what I was using it for, what I was planning to use it for. Well, I started this car months and months ago, last sp spring actually, uh, and here it is, the end of February, 2022. And I've actually been driving the car for a while now. It's been on the road and good to go for a while other than these last few finishing touches. Um, but I am no longer needing it for what I originally bought it for, uh, which means I'm selling it. I've actually got it listed online already. It is for sale. And so this is likely the last time that you'll see this car on this channel. I appreciate all of you following along with me uh, on this build. It's been fun and it's been great to get back on the channel making videos with you guys again. I've got quite a bit more planned and coming soon, including some videos I've already recorded. Um, so I've got more coming very, very soon. But as far as this build goes, we're done. So thank you guys so much for following along. Thank you for being patient with me as I've been so busy. But uh, if you haven't already done so, go ahead and subscribe, like, comment, share the video if you'd like. But most of all, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. We'll see you in the next episode.